good to be with you on the program tonight. We hope you've been strengthened and blessed in things of the Lord. I'm sure that you are if you trusted in Him. We're going to take time tonight to answer a very, very important question. Is the President of the United States of America a racist? There's two passages of Scripture that I want to, to focus on tonight. One is found in the book of Revelation. It says that he that lives by the sword, or they that live by the sword, should die by the sword. The principle of that message is, and when the Lord said it, it was to tell you that there is a revolving door. This revolving door guarantees violence, that if, if evil is used to conquer evil, then evil will never cease to exist. It is a revolving door. The way it works is very simple. If a people has been done wrong and injustice has been inflicted upon people, and those people then revolt and come time, they rise up and rise to power. And then they inflict upon another people the same thing that was inflicted upon them that they said was injustice. Then they are inflicting injustice upon the other people. The same process then is guaranteed to take place. They will go through a cycle of, of want and need and then they will revolt and soon enough there will be at some point in history a power change that will take place and then if those people say well we're going to get back at these people and then they use their power to do the same thing to them that they was doing to them then of course the cycle never ends. And that's not to say that righteous people and even godly people at some time or the other won't have to resort to war in order to keep and do what it is that needs to be done. The Bible plainly shows us that God led Israel into war hundreds of times. So that is a, a possibility. But the fact that we return evil for evil, that, that is not correcting a problem. You're not returning evil for evil to correct a problem. For, for an example, there are many people who has uh, been raised in homes where God forbid they've been molested as children. Some of those people grow up to be some of the finest parents that there are in the entire world because they, they want their children to have a life much better than what they did. Uh, but the sad case is, is that in most cases of child molestation and such things as that, the person doing the molested had to suffer the same thing whenever they were children. This is visiting evil for evil. It is a revolving door. It will never stop. So if racism was a problem in the United States of America, then the way that you stop racism and the violence that's associated with racism is that you stop racism, period. So if a group of people now rises up to try to inflict racism upon another group of people who they believe inflicted racism upon them, well, then the revolving door is there. He that lives by the sword shall die by the sword. I hope I've made that uh, point clear in the few minutes that I have to do it. The second passage of Scripture is this. There are liars. He that maketh the lie, and he that loveth and maketh the lie. He that loveth the lie. You've got two groups of people there. One who makes lies. They create them. And they become masterful at doing so. The Bible refers to this also as deception. He that loveth and maketh a lie. You have lie makers. They are very, very, very aggressive human beings. The liar is an aggressive human being. Then you have the lie lover. And the lie lover is oftentimes very non-aggressive. They just love the lie. They're fed by the lie. Many of you are preachers have seen it in your churches more times than one. People who's very quiet, sits back, and don't know anything, don't know, do anything, hadn't done anything wrong. The minute there's discord, no matter how great the lies are, no matter how, how terrible the lies are against a preacher or against someone else in, in, in the congregation, these lie lovers immediately, without even questioning, immediately gravitate toward the liar because they are lie lovers. It takes the Word of God to feed the Spirit and the truth of truth seekers. It takes, on the other hand, the lie to feed and nurture the spirit of the lie lover. In America, we also have this. We have lie makers and we have lie lovers. Now, I've told you before in times past that slander is, in fact, the first name given to Satan. It is his trademark. It's what he does. And slander, discord, 
these types of things are such great and horrendous sins that the Bible classifies them as an abomination. I've shared with you the four degrees of sin before. You have the sinner, you have the evil, those who want to hurt, the wicked, those who are twisted, and then the abominable, the greatest of all sins. The Bible said, he that soweth discord among the brethren is an abomination. And indeed they are. They are destroyers from the inside out. So that brings us to the point that we want to focus on tonight. If the president of the United States is a racist, we should know that. Is Donald Trump a racist? Everybody is now turning against him. And what are they turning against him for? He made a speech immediately after the events took place in Virginia. He condemned in that speech all forms of bigotry, all forms of racism, and said there's no place for such people. However, the words all racism and all bigotry was not enough for this sensitive, caring, and loving media that we have in the United States which without question is an enemy within and they mean to do harm to this country along with the ones of which they have colluded with and that is the Democratic Party. Those words were not enough for the media. Immediately he was called less than subhuman Mr. Trump was because he said all racism because he said there was blame on both sides of the two offending groups that came together. But that was not enough. He did not say what the media told him to say. And that's what the danger is about these people and about this democratic movement or party. You will say what they say. You will do what they tell you to do, white or black. Or you will be disowned, labeled, and thrown to the lions. That is a fact that has been proven throughout all of history. Very, very dangerous people. The words that he spoke were racist to the media and to the Democrats and to a lot of these rhino Republicans who is now turning their backs and leaving Mr. Trump in the cold. However, the words that he spoke in that very same speech caused the mother of the lady who was killed wrote Mr. Trump a letter thanking him for, quote, the comforting words that he said and how that he disavowed all forms of racism and bigotry in our country. But to the media, they were not comforted by what the mother was comforted by. They didn't see the comfort in the words. They saw pure racism in the word. So Mr. Trump is being labeled as a racist. Now, the question tonight is, is, is the President of the United States a racist? I think that we can put that down by this. He is being accused day after day now of not disavowing the Ku Klux Klan and one of the ex-leaders of the Ku Klux Klan who was supposed to have endorsed Mr. Trump during his campaign, the man's name is David Duke. And Mr. Duke is supposed to have, have endorsed Trump. And because somebody voted for Mr. Trump, Trump is no good because a bad person voted for him or endorsed him. Now all of the clips of which you're fixing to see are clips of Mr. Trump repeatedly over and over and over again disavowing David Duke. But these liberal people ask him the question and make the accusations that he is not doing so over and over and over again. Here's where the lie and the deception is first seen. You see, when the deceiver wants to make a point, they will, they, they will oftentimes deceptively make statements with a question mark at the end. It's not really a question. And it's not a question 
The fact it's not a question is manifested by the fact that they never hear the answer. It doesn't make any difference if you say it 100 times. I disavow so-and-so. I disavow 20 times, 30 times. Four, they never hear the answer. And after you have said, I disavow 20 times, they then look at you with a straight face and say, why haven't you disavowed such and such? I have disavowed it 20 times, 30 times. All of the clips that you're fixing to see right here is during the campaign where Mr. Trump continually disavowed David Duke, the Ku Klux Klan, and all forms of racism. Watch this. I reject David Duke, rejected David Duke. Uh, I've rejected the uh, KKK, the Ku Klux Klan. From the time I'm five years old, I rejected them. Why not disavow David Duke, disavow the KKK? What's going on? I'm saying to myself, how many times do I have to continue to disavow people? And the question was asked about David, group, David Duke and various groups. And I don't know who the groups are. I disavowed David Duke, and I disavowed him the day before at a major news conference, which is surprising because CNN was at the major news conference, and they heard me very easily disavow David Duke. I disavowed David Duke all weekend long on Facebook, on Twitter, and really? obviously it's never enough. Uh, David Duke is a bad person who I disavowed on numerous occasions over the years. I totally disavow the Ku Klux Klan. I totally disavow David Duke. I've been doing it now for two weeks. This is you're probably about the 18th person that's asked me the question. Even if you don't know about their endorsement, there are these groups and individuals endorsing you. I mean, I don't know what group you're talking about. Okay, repeatedly, over and over and over, he disavows. These are not questions by the media. They're statements disguised with a question mark. Now, all of that was during the campaign before he became president. Just in case someone might say, yeah, well, he was just saying that in order to become the president. Well, I think that this would disprove that. The clip that you're fixing to see is a reporter asking Donald Trump about the new reform party. Listen closely to what he says 17 years ago. What do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. What do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined. A bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. Mr. Trump has never accepted support from the Ku Klux Klan. He has never not disavowed David Duke. All of these are orchestrated lies by liars who mean harm. And I am telling you, Mr. Trump will not survive except God Almighty be with him, shield him, and protect him. These ravening wolves mean harm. They are liars, pure liars. David Duke never endorsed Donald Trump. And that's straight from the horse's mouth. David Duke himself. Listen. Specifically, I have said clearly, and every, every time I've talked about his candidacy, that I am not endorsing Donald Trump. All right, now that that should be settled and out of the way, here is the biggest problem concerning what has taken place in Baltimore, in Chicago, in Ferguson, in, in California, in Virginia, where was the police? Why is it that in all of these Democratic controlled states, controlled by Democrat mayors, who's over the police department, and governors, why is it that over the past two and a half years, no police officers has even attempted to stop violence as they are paid to do? It is because we have seen and heard that the mayors and the governors are issuing stand-down orders to the police department. The ACLU concerning this mess that took place last week themselves are siding with the neo-Nazis. Can you believe that? They are suing the state for freedom of speech rights. 
You see, everybody in America has the right to speak. That's just the way it is. That's what guarantees us all the right to speak. These people had and had received from the city the right to protest. The other side came in on them and the trouble broke out. One of the ACLU members approached the police and said, look, there are people coming in here with headgear, clubs, shields, cans of mace. This is fixing to get ugly. Why don't y'all do something to stop it? The police officer told that ACLU official, we are fixing to leave. Things are fixing to get ugly. You see, where the Black Panthers has the right to speak, where I have the right to speak, you have the right to speak, the Nazis have the right to speak, none of us has to listen to them. But they all, and we all, have the right to speak. But what we do not have the right to do, we do not have the right to come with headgear, clubs, any kind of weaponry whatsoever. The very moment that the police sees this, it is well within law to take those people out of the picture, to remove them or put them in jail. But over and over and over, time and time again, the police departments do absolutely nothing. And have you noticed that it is always in the democratically controlled states that these people riot and burn and tear up? What could be causing this? I think it's clear, in my opinion. Those who are purchasing these rioters, and we know this now to be a fact that George Soros and that the Democratic Party was hiring and paying these people. All of that come out in the WikiLeaks. Now there's news that has come out that the man who orchestrated this supposed white nationalist movement is an Obama supporter. And he is the one who orchestrated the Wall Street movement that became so violent. Now, what would this Obama supporter, this Democrat, this man who has already put together far left movements to go in and disrupt entire cities with violence and burning? What would he be doing orchestrating this Virginia meeting with these white supremacists? It tells you this, there is a conspiracy. This has set up, written all over it. That's why no matter what Mr. Trump says, the media has said he is a racist. It's all a conspiracy, friend. Now listen. As we talk about the Nazi Socialist Party, that's what they are called. They're called the Nazi Socialist Party. Nazi Socialist Party. Communist. The Nazi Socialist Party has never had anything whatsoever to do with capitalism. Never anything whatsoever to do with the Republican Party. They are socialist. Maxine Waters, she's let it slip one day that she is a socialist, saying of herself, this socialist. Look at the people around her when she made that statement, Maxine Waters. Um, finding new reserves, new opportunities to increase supplies. And guess what this liberal would be all about? This liberal will be all about socializing, uh, um, would be about basically taking over and the government running all of your companies. Now, as we deal with neo-Nazi socialist organizations, please understand that the ones that created the Ku Klux Klan was the Democratic Party. Remember this, that Malcolm X, one of the founding fathers of the Nation of Islam, told us clearly that there was a meeting in the 60s, a secret meeting, between the Nation of Islam, between the Nazis and the Ku Klux Klan, 
where they entered into an agreement to segregate America. I mentioned the conspiracy between the Muslims and the right wing in this country. I know for a fact that there is a conspiracy between, among, between the Muslims and the uh, uh, Lincoln Rockwell Nazi and also the Ku Klux Klan. There is a conspiracy. The only people that you see tied to socialism are Democrats. The only people that you see tied to the Klan are Democrats who created the Klan. Whatever you see going wrong in this country, their fingerprints is all over it while they attempt to blame it on someone else. These people were supposed to have been screaming out anti-Semitic, anti-Jewish statements at this rally in Virginia. And oh, how the media was so upset about that. But yet, once again, you go to some of the leading voices in the Democratic Party. Jesse Jackson. Jesse Jackson called Jews Hammy Town. Louis Farrakhan called Jews the synagogue of Satan. Al Sharpton called the Jews white interlopers and diamond merchants. I don't care who called who what. I'd love to live in a perfect world, but we don't and we never will. But what I am concerned about is when Jesse Jackson said it, when Al Sharpton said it, all Democrats, when Louis Farrakhan said it, do you ever remember hearing a word about it? These people are touted to the highest degree as, as wonderful saviors of the earth by the media and the Democrats. Yet they call someone who has never been associated with any of this mess, a racist. They pretend that it bothers them that someone would make a slur against a Jewish person, but yet it never bothers them when they themselves in their own do it. Donald Trump didn't make a slur against anybody. He wasn't even there. He didn't orchestrate it. An Obama supporter is the one that orchestrated the white separatist movement in Virginia. Now, finally, I'll end with this tonight. They condemn Donald Trump because someone may have endorsed him or voted for him, who now we know never did. But they accuse him as though it's his fault that someone in a nation of 300 million people voted for him. Well, as I said, come to find out, the one they was accusing him of never did endorse him and he certainly disavowed him as far back as 17 years ago when Mr. Trump disavowed David Duke as a racist and a bigot. But let me show you who did vote for Barack Obama. This man. No, no, no. I think it might be a little bit intimidating that you have a stick in your hand. That's why, you know? Yes. No, 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 I'm an attorney. I mean, that's a weapon, so that's why I'm a little worried. This man is standing in front of a polling booth during the election of Barack Obama with a club in his hand screaming, you will serve the black man. This man, the DOJ, had already brought charges against him. And then came Barack Obama and his attorney general, Eric Holder, and dropped all the charges on him, stating that there was not enough evidence of voter intimidation to try him. What if a white man would have been standing in the door of a polling precinct with a club in his hand, hollering, get ready to serve Donald Trump? You think that had been enough evidence for voter intimidation? The media are liars. There is no two ways about that. This is that same man. I hate white people, all of them. Every last iota of a cracker, I hate him. That man voted for Barack Obama and Barack Obama came to his aid. What did this press say about that? Did they condemn the connection? They condemned the connection with Donald Trump that never even existed. But they said not a mumbling word about a man who stood with a stick in his hand in front of a polling booth. Another, a man who ran in the streets hollering you hate white people. And that's not all he said. This is the same man. You want freedom? You're gonna have to kill some crackers. You're gonna have to kill some of their babies. Right. Mr. Obama was tied hand in glove to this man. And this man endorsed and supported Barack Obama. 
but never a single word uttered about it, never any outcry from the media. But whenever it comes to a man who supposedly voted for Donald Trump, endorsed Donald Trump, who never did, and who Donald Trump disavowed by name 17 years ago as a bigot and a racist and a person you did not want in your party. Now, this is a conspiracy, my friend. It's a conspiracy being worked by the most evil forces in American history, the Democratic Party and the mainstream media. It is corruption at its highest level. Somehow, some way, it will have to be stopped. What do you see as the biggest problem with the Reform Party right now? Well, you've got David Duke just joined, a bigot, a racist, a problem. I mean, this is not exactly the people you want in your party. Some rest now, and why you do, I'll carry that load for you. 